Um, wow, we've been together for 18 lessons, really? I've only always already been talking for a day almost. Shat Hosanam. Okay. In the past, we've been talking about variables in terms of constants. So, remind me, how do I make a variable? And then I specify, oh, let me make it bigger. Is that good? Um, I give it a name, like name, and then I give it a value like Bogos. Right? Okay. Now, the const that we put here means that the value assigned to name can never change. It means that name can never change. So I can never then say name is now equal to something else. This is not allowed because name is a constant. The value that you put into it will stay exactly like that. You can never modify what is inside of name, right? Today, we're going to break that rule. The way to break that rule is to declare your variables not as a const, meaning a constant, but with a let. So the syntax is basically the same, you just call it let instead of const. So let the variable name like x, and that can be one. Later I can change it, I can say now have x be x plus one. The value now for x is 2. Make sense? With a const, you cannot change the value. With a let, you can. Whenever you write programs, always start by making everything a const. Always, whenever you make a variable, make it a constant. Only make it a let if you absolutely have to. But by default, make everything a constant. Okay, now what can we do with something like this? There is a looping construct. So far, if you wanted to loop in code, how do we loop? Recursion, recursion right. So recursion allows us to loop without modifying any variables. But there are structures in programming that you can now learn because you know recursion, you understand all the other stuff. I will show you a few other things. There is a structure called a for loop. What is a for loop? Actually, before we do a for loop, let's do something simpler, a while loop. So let's make a variable, like let x be, you know, 10. Okay, then we say while, and we specify a Boolean expression. Well, while x is greater than 0, and then... Oh, I just created an infinite loop. Great. Um, give me a moment. You'll see why that happened in a moment once the browser loads again. Okay. Okay, look, let me add a syntax error just so things don't run. Let x be 10. While x is greater than 0, we're oh, come on. <laughs> Do you know why? Because the mistake happened after the while loop and it ran until the while loop and stuck in the while loop and never got to my mistake. Okay, let's do this again. It's okay, this is the last time. I learned from my mistakes, no problem. Okay, I'm going to make my mistake at the top so nothing runs. Okay, good. Now, let x be 10 again. While x is greater than 0, we will do something like console.log hello. Okay, if I let this run, this would run forever. Why? Look, x is 10, right? It says while as long as 
this expression is true, execute this, go again, check, execute, go again, check, execute, go again, check, execute. And if you notice, x does not change, x is always 10, so it's going to run forever, right? So let's change it. Let's do x is equal to x minus 1. Now let's get rid of that. And we get 10 hellos. So let's see what's happening here. We have a variable that has some value in it, in this case 10. We have a condition. As long as x is greater than 0, run the code between this and that. So we go here, we print, we change x, making it a 9. It comes here, is 9 greater than 0? Yes, console log. 8, is 8 less than 0? Yes, uh, greater than 0. Yes, console log. And we keep doing this until eventually x becomes 0, right? In which case, while is no longer true and we break out of it. Make sense? Easy, right? Okay. So, if that's the case, help me do this. Imagine I have an array which has inside of it some text like foo, bar, and of course, bolus. <laughs> help me write a loop that will print foo, then bar, then bolus to the screen. In other words, a loop that will iterate over every one of these things and print it to the screen using a while loop. Yes, sir? Sir, what is the difference between bar and let? It has to do with, okay, I'll tell you later because they don't know, but it has to do with scoping. One is func var it's functional scope, let is block scope. Okay, so help me write a function that will loop through all the values inside of R, inside of this array, and print it to the console. Okay, so first, okay, so while, what? Wait, let me add a syntax error so I don't have an infinite loop. Okay, while what? What x? I, do you see an x here? What? Is, is, okay, so we need a variable like let i, which is set to zero. We say if as long as i is less than array dot length, and in the, in here we're going to constantly change i to be i plus one. And in here we just console dot log r i, and we get rid of our syntax error. Whee! Look what's happening. You have a variable called i that has zero in it. Is i less than array dot length? What is the length of this array? Three. Three. It's the last index. This is zero index, one index, two index, plus one. Three. Good. So the length of this is three. Is zero less than three? Yes. So we go inside, we print, we change i to be one more than that, which means zero becomes a one, right? Okay, is one less than array dot length, which is three? Yes, it is. We print, we print the next one, and we keep doing this until it becomes three. Is three less than three? No, it's not, so we break out of it. Easy, yes? Is anyone confused with this? Yes, sir. Uh, should we specify that before the i equals i plus 1? So you can't use a variable unless you've created it. You mean, can you put this down here? Uh, should I specify before i, uh, I do let or let or something? Yeah, here. Look, this is where you make the i. This is where you create it. This is where you're just changing its value. That's, that, this is the point. If you make a let, you can change it. If you make a const, you cannot. Ask us question. Okay. This is the termination case. 
If this is false, that's what breaks it. Yes? No, there's no else. It's just a, as long as this is true, it will keep calling. Oh, you can you can do. Okay, Here you can say if i is equal to r dot length, then do something else. Do something else. Yeah. Okay. There. Yeah. Yes. Vorits chana. Got it. You can you can wrap the entire thing in an if statement. You can say if um, i is zero, which we know it is. Hang on. Yeah. In code, any of these constructs can be nested inside of the other const. So inside of a while loop, you can have another while loop. Right? So an example, by the way. Okay, this is a good question for you. Imagine I have a two-dimensional array. I have an array which is made up of arrays. One array, two array, three arrays. Um, and let's say it has a bunch of numbers in it, like whatever, this has a bunch of numbers, and this has a bunch of numbers. Okay, good. It's an array of arrays. I want to print every value in every array into the screen. In other words, I want to print 2, 3, 45, 8, 2, 88, 9, 5. How do I do it? Exactly. So while inside of the while, right? So first thing we do is loop over all the values inside of the first array. So, here, let me make a syntax error. Let i1, let's say, this is for the parent, right? B0, while i1 is less than r.length, we're going to do something here. Do something here, but then we need to i1 equals i1 plus 1. With me so far? So what this will do is it will iterate over this one, then this one, then that one. Now we need to get that uh, the local array. So const um, our local array, or nested array, nested r, is r index of i, i1. i1 is the index that looks at this, then this, then this. So zero, if when it's zero, we get all of this array and put it into this guy. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now we have to iterate over this one. So we make another one. Let i2 equals zero, while i2 is less than nested r dot length. And we have to change i2 to be i2 plus one. Console.log nested nested r i2. Okay, 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 we'll go over it, don't worry. Look. Okay, let me explain the code. You understand that this is an array and that every value in that array is itself a value, right? The, the value, what is the value at the zero index of this array? It's this array, right? That's the second array, that's the third array. Yes? Okay, so 
This part, we just make a variable. As long as that variable is less than array.length, what is array.length? Uh, three. three. Look, we have one, two, three items in it. Three, right? Okay. So as long as it's less than that, and then we're going to increment it by one. So if, you, if I were to take away this, is this part okay? Okay. Now, let's take this part away for a second. In here, we're saying we're now taking the value at that index. So the first time when i1 is 0, what is r0? It's this array here. So nested array is assigned to this array. Right? Now what we want to do is loop over every value inside of nested array. Right? Okay. So we make a variable for this nested array. As long as that variable is less than the length of the nested array, we increment the nested, that index. And all we do is we take that index of the nested array and we print it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, okay. I got one for you. Yes. At 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 base. In shunning? Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Because look, watch what will happen. Here's what he's saying. Why have an I two here? Why not just use I one here? This is what you said, right? Miropa. Are we changing I1 here? It's This will cause an infinite loop. Whatever I1 is, right? It's, if it's less than this length, it's going to loop forever. Okay. So you need another variable to, for this loop. Think of it this way. Every time you want to loop, you make a variable that you change over time. And whenever the, the expression inside while is falsy, you break out of the while. That's your termination case. Make sense? A, a lot easier than recursion, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Help me do this. I don't want to hear anything from this side because I think you guys got it. So, psh. help me write a function. The implementation of the function will have a while loop. So I will write a function. In the function, there will be a while loop. That while loop will create n number of stars and return them back to me. What? Remember that, that function that we wrote where it returns a string with stars in it? of the amount that you give it. Help me implement that function, but this time not with recursion, but with a while loop. Okay. And when I do const log func with a five, I should get five stars, which I do not now, of course. Okay, help me. Less, less, than less than five. Wait, five is just an argument, guys. Five goes into num. Um, I. As long as I. If we're starting with zero. You want me to start with one? Why don't we start with zero for simplicity and just have it be less than num? It's good. John. I equals I plus one. Uh huh. Argument now. 
Ha. Ha ha ha. Okay. So now we have that this being five. We keep looping over i as long as it's less than num, which of course we gave it as a 5. And what do we do again? That's it. Let's go over what's happening here. Num is the number of stars I want, right? And it's the argument to my function. It's the input. It's the thing I stick into the hole, right? Okay. Okay. Then I need something for my while loop, some variable that is going to change. It's going to change and change and change until finally the while loop will break, right? Okay, that's this. As long as i is less than num, I'm going to do something and then increase i by 1. And I'm going to sort of keep doing this, right? Okay. Um, and then what I do is for each time, all I do is I take a string which has nothing in it and I keep attaching to it another star. So the first time I attach a star, it's one star. Second time I attach it, it gets two stars. And I keep doing this until I'm done and I return that string. Yeah. What do you get if you attach? Yes. Actually, what I could still do this. This is okay. But how many stars do I get? Exactly. Because it's zero through five inclusively, right? Yeah. If we get uh, let star equal uh, a string with a space, we would get as an input the same string with a space. Star space, sense? Ah, I meant let star equals it's an empty string, right? Oh, this. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then at the end, before you return, do stir is equal to stir plus all. It makes sense, right? You're just sticking. And if I wanted here, in, a, in front of here we go, I wanted to say yay, here we go. I just do yay on this side. Inch. Aran Sadan is such, eh? Okay, Sadanov say. Easy. Yes? Huh? Starry Taraj Petka inch? Chem the sum, Jim. Okay, other questions about this code? Does this code make sense? Yes, sir. Yo, guys, come on. Go. Ha. Yete vertum vor vertum vorte. Ha, stech. Yes. Very good question. Look what he's asking. What will happen if I console log i here? Look. Initially, i is zero. Right? When it's zero, is it less than five? Yes. So we change it and we make it a one. Which is less than five, we make it a two. Less than five, make it a three, make it a four. Once we make it a five, that's when this is wrong and it goes out. Right? So here, if I console log i, yes, I get a five. Exactly. Actually, you know, that's an interview question. Sometimes when you go to a programming interview, they will say, what is the value of a variable after the loop? That's the answer. Um, questions? Does this make sense to everybody? You can go home and write this, no problem.
Yes. Why what? What is look? You called this function, right? It ran pump 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 printed, then returned string, and then the string that was returned gets replaced here, and you console log that. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Let's draw something. What do you want to draw? A pumpkin. That's, yeah, it's going to be a little difficult with a while loop. I know. Okay. Help me write a function that takes an array of numbers and returns their sum. Understand the question? Help me write a function that takes an array of numbers and returns their sum, their addition. Okay, go. And I will call this sum with some array, like. And I will console.log that result. Okay, so. Using a while loop, help me add all the numbers together. Let me break it. Okay, go. Or total. Okay. Wait, did you say less than or something? Or you just said less than, okay. Oh, sorry. I need to change i, right? Otherwise it's gonna loop forever. So i is equal to i plus one. Okay, and what do I need to do here? Am I done? Return total. Let me get rid of the syntax here. Boom. And now I can add as many numbers together as I want. Magic. Did you just create a calculator? Did I create a calculator? Sort of. You can think of it that way. How would you, forgetting code, if I just gave you a bunch of numbers, how would you add them together? <laughs> you would add the first one to the second to the third, etc., right? But you have to store that somewhere. Where do you store it, right? The other thing you could do, look, you could do this. You could do array of zero and then start from one. You understand why? Exactly. You begin with the first value, which is 3, and then you add up everything to that first value. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, other questions? You can, could you write a quiz on this? So if I gave you a quiz on, on while loop day after tomorrow, it's okay? You guys are going to be okay? <laughs> what? Day after. Day after tomorrow. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, in that case, let's keep going. Um, for loop, yeah. Yes. Intro? Vol pochetzi, ha, inch. Why is. Okay, her question, ladies and gentlemen is why is uh, this the same thing as, uh, wait, uh, that. Because what you're doing is you're setting total to be the first value, which in this case is three, and then you're adding, you're starting with index of one, so you're adding to that this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So you're doing three, and then you're doing plus four, 
plus 5, plus 83, plus whatever. Index 1, which is where we're starting, which is where we're starting. But if I did this, what would this do? Exactly. I would get a number that would have three more than what I'm expecting. Yeah. I'm sorry, Austin. If we head into array in the middle of our array, a string, what would happen? Good question. Okay, he's saying, suppose in here we had this. What would happen? You tell me. Okay. Yeah. Look, the first. What is the first thing that happens? We have a total of zero. Look, look, look. I, here's the answer. A total is zero, right? Which is a number. What happens when you add i, which is zero? Sorry. Uh, total which is zero to r i which is zero. It's a three, so you add three to zero and you get three, right? So total is three, no problem. What happens if you add four to three? What happens if you add five? Twelve, right? Seven plus five is twelve. What happens if you add twelve to this? One, two, eight, three characters in a, in a string. What happens if you add one, two, eight, three characters to this? You get one, two, eight, three, nine, zero, one, zero. One, two, eight, three, nine, zero, one, zero. Okay, now do this. Let's add in reverse, not add 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 83 plus... Instead, let's add this to this and then to that and then to that and then to that. R length? Minus 1. And we keep doing this as long as I is... We want to do it as long as it's greater than or equal to zero, right? Now let's get rid of our syntax error. And we get that. Why? Because the first thing we do is we can cat, well, we add this to zero, right? Because our total is zero. So we add that to zero, we get that. Then right away we add this to this. And we get that. And then we just add 5 and 4 and 3, and so we get all this other stuff. Uh, questions regarding this? No? Okay. So look, whenever we write a while statement, if you remember, it's basically made of three parts. You make the variable you're going to change. I is a good one. You specify the termination case, like uh, how long should it loop? That's in your while, as long as i is, say, less than 100. Okay? You, I won't, I know. And the third thing is you have to change your variable so that eventually it stops looping. So you change it to be i plus 1. So first part, second part, third part, right? So any time in a quiz or a test, if I ever ask you, write a while loop, implement these three parts. Make a variable, specify your while expression, and then change your variable so it stops at some point. Okay? Question, how do I, without changing this or this, change it so it runs 50 times rather than 100? Yeah, change it by two. Make sense? Okay, good. And then you put whatever code you want to repeat in here. Here. You understand the three points? Yes. This works faster than the version? It doesn't, it depends on how the platform implements it. It doesn't have to. If you have tail recursion, you can do it just as fast. Don't worry about that for now. Um, 
So, but, oh, but one thing, remember how I told you that you can blow your stack? You can get a stack overflow if you do recursion too many times? You don't have the problem here. You can, loop, you can have a while loop as big as you want, basically, as long as it, yeah, you can have it basically as big as you want. You can loop over a million, okay. You can't do million recursion. Make sense? Unless you have tail call optimization, which we don't have. Okay, now listen. Again, how many parts does a while loop have? Three. Initialization of variable. Che the check, checking the condition, checking the condition, and changing the variable, right? One more time. Creating the variable, checking the condition, changing the state of the variable. One more time. Making the variable, checking the condition, changing the variable. There is another structure that puts all three into one thing. It's called a for loop, and it works basically the same way. You open it up, and the first thing you do is... The second thing you do is... The third thing you do is... That's it. And then you write whatever you want here. Got it? Why did it print t a yay ten times? Because it told us. Exactly. I don't want to change with only changing the... Except you two. I only want to change this. I want to print five yays, not ten. What do I do? Shrek also. Now I get five. Let me print a hundred. Wait. Whee! That's a lot of yays. Let me print the in. Let me print a number next to yay. So yay space I. There it is. And the last index is going to be 99. Right? 0 through 99. That's 100. Yes? Why do we need a while if have Good question. Um, the while, remember, just takes a Boolean value, right? Why do we need a while? I'm trying to think when I use, there are cases when it makes more sense, but I'm trying to think of one. Um, Better to say we can do both for, but we can do both. The thing is, yeah, why would you ever use a one over the other? Let's ask Stack Overflow, wait, 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 okay. If we're doing, for example, infinite loops to get input from the user, oh, while loop. Um, loops and hang on. Ah, uh, four over. Why is for loop better than a while loop? You should use a while loop to loop through code while some condition is true, like a boolean is true. Note that the condition for the loop must still be true, but the condition is usually... Okay, it's just saying what it is. Uh, when use while loop rather than a for loop. Here we go. Stack overflow. Okay. We, okay, so they're making a variable. This just means... This is Java, so don't worry about it, but it's just saying int means integer. So they're making a variable that is an integer that has a value of zero. It has a while loop. This we know. We have an if statement. This we know. We just haven't studied this. Very quickly, let me tell you what break is. Break means stop the loop. Yeah, it's, no, it's not return because if you're in a function, you don't actually return. It just means stop looping. No, look. See? By the way, with a var, var yet has But don't, don't, forget, forget it. Just use a let. 
Okay. Um, okay, so break allows you to stop. So, why don't we do this? If i is equal to 50, break. That means it will go until 50 and then stop. Boom. There is another one, listen, called continue. Continue means just jump to the next loop. So you might have code here that prints something. Let's do only five. That prints yay and prints i, whatever, right? Let's print all the numbers that are not divisible by five. Love. This will print all the numbers. And now we say if that are not divisible. So if it is divisible, so if i modulo 5 is equal to 0, we continue. Is that what you said? That are not divisible by 5? Huh? Okay. Continue. Listen, here's the difference between break and continue. Pay attention. Continue means just jump to the next loop. Okay, so it will come here and if this is true, it will go here and go back to the loop. It will not execute all the stuff below. Exactly, that's why you see it. 1, 2, 3, 4, you skip 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, sorry, you skip 10, you see? If you do the opposite, if you say remove all the ones that are, now you only get the ones divisible by 5. Can you do this in the world? Yes, you can use a break in a for loop or a while loop, and you can use a continue in a for loop and a while loop. Yep. Yes. Got it? How do you continue in a while loop when you specify that you have to? It's the syntax is exact. Yeah, but I is new syntax of it's true. I is new. Do you like it? Or write it before the while loop? Oh, yes, you're right. You have to change, otherwise you get an infinite loop. Yeah, because you keep continuing and you keep bouncing like this. Yes, exactly. You print break? It will stop. Yeah, it jumps out of the loop and it keeps going. In other words, look, here's what he's saying. Let's break at the moment... Later... Okay, look, let's break, the moment we hit something that is divisible by 5, let's stop. Ah, oh, shoot, okay, and, and i is greater than 0. Okay. Hence, hingin hasav, ayo, break, so. And then it jumps to the end of the for loop and your code continues. Barza? Chi Barza from Hap. Mirope? Ha, yeah, for Chi Barza, Haskasar. Right? Any questions regarding of what a for loop is? Um, so a for loop has three parts. The initialization of your variable, the condition, the check for the condition, as long as it's true loop, and the mutation of the variable, changing the variable. Yes? Yeharka. Ah, what if we were doing this? Miropa. Uzmeng zero bajanats hingin zero remainder achatalis. Drama voshiman miang. For mi ban testing, asmeng bites miyan and tevere vorong for zero its medicine. Ask a searcher. Here, let's do something simple. If I, let's print up to 60. There, we go all the way up, and the moment we hit 60, we stop. 
Make sense? Let's print everything except 60. Now we get all these numbers, 50, 60 is gone. We skipped it, right? We continued. Make sense? In Chejun. This? At the very bottom. Right? You run over this code. Tuck, 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 tuck. When you're done, then you keep going. Does that? Inzal. Um, other questions? Can we go back to the slide, to the tab where we discussed Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, right, of course. Okay, by the way, interestingly enough, this is a different language. But look. By knowing, understanding JavaScript, understanding that syntax, this you can kind of understand, right? Now you know everything about this. You know it's a variable that has this value of zero. You know this is the condition that you're checking. You're checking if some condition break, and then there's a function called that's passing a counter to it. Fine. Okay, now what does it say? Um, in this case, I found that while loop is better than a for loop because if I want to achieve the same in a for loop, I have to assign the value of counter to another variable. Uh. Oh, that's no, because you could no, because you could still do this. Look, <laughs> watch this. You could actually do this. Basic. Basic. You can do that. I mean, you have to do it this way in while, but you don't have to do this in for. Yeah, but so the point is, why not just always use for then? Because if it's a superset. Okay, there's a stack over. Okay, that's why we're on stack overflow. Wait. A for loop is just special kind of a while loop, which happens to deal with incrementing a variable. You can emulate for loop. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, you can behave like for... No, that's not a good argument either, because you, you could change the... Okay, basically there's no real strong argument that I'm seeing anywhere. Um, you can do everything with a for loop that I can see that you can do with a while loop and vice versa. So just... I, the reason why I, I generally... Listen, listen. In general, in code, I see for a lot more than while. Because for just puts everything into one line, right? All the three conditions, the initialization, the condition, and the change, all is just in one place. Which is just nicer than just putting it everywhere, right? Having the variable here, the change here. And, does that make sense? So you generally use for. Go. <laughs> It's be for metric ROS on this, but you're right, it would be a little weird. So what you could say is this. You could, let's create a function that checks if a, if a value is, I don't know, greater, less than 10. Is less than 10. There, it's an amazing function, I know. Now, while is less than 10, some value. Mm. So now we make a let foo be, you know, zero. And then here we need to do foo is foo plus one. And here we do console.log. There you go. Does everyone understand what I did? but whatever. Look, there's a function that takes a number and all it does is it says if the number is less than 10, it get, you get a true, if not, you get a false. We create a foo in which we put zero. We call this function with foo, which is a zero. What does it return, true or false? True, zero is less than 10. So we, we go inside, we do yay, and we change foo to be one plus itself, which means a one. 
We go again here. Is 1 less than 10? Yes. Keep going. Is 2 less than 10? Yes. And we keep doing this until we get to 10. 10 is not less than 10, so we break out of it. Yes? Yes. Yes. Key press function. You mean an, an event listener? N no, because. Mm, no, because the problem is as long as your code is looping, it's it's not allowing anything else to happen. One spot's up, man. Ask us, sir. Okay. Um, everyone, yes, go. Okay, do you understand this? Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Okay, which part don't you understand? Huh. In other words, if I if th this mean means this code will never run. It's the same thing as doing this. If false, then you know, and then you write code here. This code will never run, right? Because if Okay. This code can never run. Do you see why? Because you have a false. It can't run. Right? Whereas this code will always run. Guess? Okay, a while loop basically follows the same thing. Imagine it like a looping if statement. Think of it like a looping if statement. Right? What if you, if I did true here? Okay, I'll do it. No, I shouldn't do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay, tell you what. If I'll do this. If foo is equal to 100, I'll break. Yeah. Aima Aima ster karom infinite loop ster sum. There. What what happens here? As long as true is truthy, okay? Do this, but this is the part that's going to break me out of my loop. And it does, eventually. Which is why I only get 100 of these. If I, if I did not have this, if I removed this, it would freeze my browser. It will spin forever. Make sense? Questions? Go. Yeah. Uh, if we use a set timeout inside the loop, then it means keep the values during that time and then continue, or it would just... Let's, let's talk about it offline. Set timeout does us something else. Heto huh? Okay, other questions about this? Questions or concerns? Yes, sir. Why did you write a list and no, first time? This one? I just wanted to show that you could use a function, this function, for example. There's no good reason why. It, I just wanted to show that you could call a function and have the result of that be the condition of the while. Yeah, it makes sense? Okay. It's not useful. Just, I just want you to understand it. Yeah? Um, are there questions? Everyone understands a while, everyone understands a for? Yes? Okay. There's one more. There is one more. It's not used very often, but I want you to know it anyway just so that you know it. It's called a do while. And here's how it works. You do a do. And then you write your while. So let's, so const, you know, I, or sorry, const, let I be, you know, zero. In here we'll do I equals I plus one. 
And then here we will check that i is less than you know 10. How is this different from a regular while loop? It's different only in one way. It's that the first time it will always run. It's guaranteed to run the first time. But then after it runs, it will check this condition and if it's true, it will run again. Got it? Whereas in a while, so imagine this, if I did this false, and I did console log here, it will print. Make sense? It will run from here to here, running the code inside, then check this condition, and if it's true, then do it again. Check the condition, do it again. Check the condition, do it again. In order to, for it to just run one time, even if you do false, it will still run. Yeah, if you, how many times do you want it to loop? How many? Five? Okay, then yes, then you need to do, you need to change here, i is equal to i plus one, and as long as i is less than five. But the point is, even if you did i is less than zero, if it's zero and you add a one, of course, sorry, of course one is less than zero, right? So why did we get this? Because again, it runs this before checking while. It runs, then checks while, and if it's true, does it again. Okay, hide and ask him. While stuguma yete ayoya nor ashkatatsnuma. Do while anuma heto nor stuguma asuma hima elianem. Yete ha anuma. Stuguma anuma. Stuguma anuma. Yeah, you could, you mean change it here? Sure, you can do. You could. <laughs> yes. Can we do what? Can we do a while before do? Uh, you mean put the while expression here? Uh, I mean like, uh, we use do something that's why uh, it is like I is less than zero. Oh, you mean put a while inside of do? Uh, no, outside, before the zero. Uh, ah, you mean, oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, then you just get a nesting of a loop inside of a loop. Remember how we did a while loop and then inside of that we had another while loop? You can use a for loop with a while loop with a do while loop, with a for loop, with a while loop, with, you can nest however you want. Make sense? Okay. Um, questions? Okay, a few more quick things that I think you guys should know. I, I mentioned this last time, but let me mention it again. I is equal to I plus one. The, what? Yeah, another way to do this, wait, is to do i is plus equals 1. If I want to do pl is 6, I could do this. If I want to do incremented by 100, I could do that. If I want i to 6 minus i, then? If I want i, have a set of bits, can I tell that's i? That's the same thing as saying i is equal to i minus 6. Ah, che, remen pati ames. Then it's not that. Does that part make sense? Okay. Yeah, you can say. Syntax error denim. Lucarves says I have us here. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> I uh, plus equals 10 will add 10 to, to that, right? If I then do it again, 
I get a 20. Make sense? Because you're adding 10 to i and assigning it back to i. If I do i minus equals 3, it will take the 20 that we had, subtract 3, 17, put it back into i, and give me 17. Is, yes? Okay, so a lot of people know the plus plus, so I'll tell you. If this i plus plus, hang on, you can also do this. This is the same thing as i plus equals 1, which if you recall is exactly the same as i equals i plus 1. Menek meka. Plus plus means add a one to yourself and assign it back to you. Go. Yeah, I yeah I'll get. I don't want to confuse. Yeah, you can also do plus plus i. There's a little difference. By the way, you can also do i minus minus. What do you think that does? Minus one. You can also do i times equals four. What do you think i is now? Right. Yet got sense sense. Sense. That's kira. So it's i to the power of four assigned back to i. I hit our kira. Chen port sagi das. Ari port sank. Wow, hey, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's very cool. All right, nice. If you do well, uh, no, if you do, you can't do this. Wait, you can't do I plus what? Sense just got on us. Okay. So, by the way, now that you understand the syntax, what you will often see, listen, 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 is when people make for loop, they will often do this. Let I be zero. I is less than 10. I plus plus. It's optional. Remember, this means I is equal to I plus one. Right? That's it. It's a very common syntax that you find all over. For, is, is it just me or? I was like, be cool, be cool. It's okay. Hang on to the desk. It's going to be all right. Jesus say, ah, oh. Ganes, okay, sorry, sorry, I'll say Ha, 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 you can do another four, but wait, listen, listen, be careful about this. Um, but it has to be a different variable, like I2 is equal to zero, let, or I2 is less than, let's say, 20, I2 plus plus. Yeah. Actually, question. How many times will O get printed? Yeah. Amen. Sikli Hamad is Kan Sikla. So 10 times, we're looping 20 times. 10 times 20. A whole bunch of it. Oh? Oh. Uh, okay, cool. Any questions or concerns about loops? Okay, very good.